Hi, my name is Mark Warner, and it was my honor and privilege to serve as the court administrator for the Stark County Court of Common Pleas for most of my career. And even though I'm retired now, I still enjoy coming back here and telling people the story of this beautiful building with its many artistic details and a rich history that spans more than 200 years and three buildings. First, some historical background. The history of the courthouse begins with Bezalel Wells, the founder of the city of Canton, who developed plans for the city, and in those plans, he included a site for the courthouse on the square. When the first courthouse was constructed from 1816 to 1817, it was a 44 by 44 two-story brick building that served the county for more than 50 years. And it was during that time that William McKinley came to Canton in 1867 and opened his law practice with retired Judge Belden. So McKinley actually practiced in that very first courthouse. McKinley witnessed the construction of the second courthouse, which began in 1868, was finished in 1870, by which time he had been elected the county prosecutor. This second courthouse was designed by architect H. E. Meyer, who designed several other noteworthy courthouses around the state of Ohio, some of which are still in existence today. It was constructed in what's known as the Italianate style and included two towers and a large, beautiful fountain located on the east side of the courthouse between the building and Market Avenue. On the interior, it had only one courtroom, that which is now known as the McKinley Courtroom. However, this second courthouse was outgrown within 23 years. The county commissioners were reluctant to undertake the cost of a new structure during the depression years of the 1890s. Accordingly, architect George F. Hammond from Cleveland, Ohio, was commissioned to remodel and expand the existing structure. Hammond's plans actually called for the construction of a new, larger building around the body of the existing structure. Construction began in 1893 and included the removal of the two towers of the second courthouse and expansion of the building to include two additional courtrooms on the second floor, along with several other significant changes. And again, the beautiful McKinley courtroom was preserved as part of this third courthouse and still exists today. Here we see some of the beautiful features that Hammond wanted to preserve and replicate in his design of the third courthouse, including this carved ionic capital on the bench here, these carved flowers, this laurel wreath, and this egg and dart motif carved on the edge of the bench. As we leave the courtroom, take note of something that you don't see in newer courthouses, fireplaces. These were an absolute necessity in McKinley's time during cold Ohio winters. Today, these are for decorative purposes only, an example of preserving the past while incorporating modern conveniences like central heating and air conditioning. In fact, throughout the tour, you're going to see how the modern merges with the past, especially in this next stop. Here we are at the front entrance of the courthouse, and I want to use this opportunity to talk about some important features of the tour. And I want to start by talking about court security screening. Today, court security screening is an absolute necessity in courthouses. Sheriff's deputies have to screen everyone that comes through this courthouse to ensure the safety of everybody that comes here. But I also want to talk about this from the perspective of when this courthouse was finished in 1895, and I want to comment on what I consider to be George Hammond's architectural genius in his design of this third courthouse. Behind me on the ceiling, what you see are some of the beautiful artistic details from the McKinley courtroom that Hammond incorporated into this beautiful entrance to the courthouse. And unfortunately today, most people coming into the courthouse do not notice this because they are so focused on security screening. But if you think about this from the perspective of 1895, this entrance set the tone for this beautiful building. 
and Hammond incorporated many of these beautiful features that existed in the McKinley courtroom, still exist, including the laurel garland on the ceiling framed by the egg and dart motif. For the first time, we see the torch and wreath design. We saw the wreath design in the courtroom, but here we see the torch and wreath design, which is symbolic of knowledge and illumination and justice. There's other beautiful architectural details here, and even on the front porch, outside these main doors here, the egg and dart motif frames the panels on the ceiling of the porch. And again, most people aren't able to focus on this because they're so concerned with coming through court security when they come into the courthouse. But it's really important to take the time when you come here to pay attention to all the beautiful details of this building. I want to take a few moments to talk about some other features. Here on this stair post, we can see the egg and dart motif. We can see the wreath and this floral pattern that were carved into the bench in the McKinley courtroom. And there's other nice features that are incorporated into this main stairwell that runs to the fourth floor. And in fact, all of these stair posts contain the same level of detail. I also want to talk about the beautiful marble that's used in this building. If you think about 1895 when this building was finished and the fact that many streets and sidewalks were not paved, the care and maintenance of this building would have been a real issue. And not only does this marble add to the stature and beauty of it, but it really has a very functional capability as well and it is so much easier to maintain. And the marble is used on the, on the wainscoting, on the stairwell, and on the floors throughout the building, and it really adds a great deal of beauty to the building. You'll also see behind me two large paintings depicting scenes with President McKinley. These were done by a Scottish-born artist by the name of Finley, who actually painted three of them that are here in the courthouse. The one on my left shows McKinley taking the oath of office in 1897, the one on my right shows McKinley and his cabinet signing the peace treaty ending the Spanish-American War in 1899. Another feature of the painting to my right, the gentleman featured in the middle of the painting, is a man by the name of William R. Day, who was a local attorney who was actually appointed to McKinley's cabinet when he was elected president. And following McKinley's death, William R. Day was appointed an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court, where he served for 18 years. We will actually see the third panel hanging in the courtroom on the second floor as we continue our tour. Earlier in the tour, I mentioned George Hammond's plans called for renovating and expanding the second courthouse to create the third courthouse. That expansion included adding on to the building to the south towards Tuscarawa Street and to the east towards Market Avenue. And it's my considered belief that this wall here represented where the second courthouse ended. During that expansion, they added two additional second floor courtrooms, and we're going to go into one of those courtrooms now. We are standing in one of the two courtrooms that was created with the construction of the third courthouse. And while Hammond did much to try and replicate some of the features from the McKinley courtroom, such as the oak wainscoting and the columns with the ionic capitals and some details on the bench, as a cost-saving measure, he did not replicate all of that elaborate detail that we see, particularly on the ceiling of the McKinley courtroom. Earlier when we were in the lobby, I showed you the two paintings that were done by Scottish-born artist Finley depicting scenes of McKinley and mentioned that there was a third painting that hangs in the second floor courtroom and we are now in that courtroom and you can see that painting behind me. And this scene depicts McKinley conducting his famous front porch campaign from his home here in Canton. We're also in the courtroom of the longest serving judge in the history of the Stark County Court of Common Pleas. Judge John G. Haas presided in this courtroom for 30 years. And when he first took the bench in 1989, he saw this courthouse in its worst condition. 
try to envision a window with broken panes that were open to the outside with duct tape holding them together as best as possible, periodically a bird coming in. Uh, and that's what the state of this courthouse was prior to the renovation. And that impacts when lawyers from out of the area come to this courthouse and they were meeting with you in less than ideal situations. It made it extra hard to get that sense of professionalism. This building was not always cared for properly and maintained in a good condition. We're in the second courtroom that was completed as part of the construction of the third courthouse in 1895. There were some additions made to the interior and to the exterior that really changed its architectural appearance. For example, in 1950, the front porch was enclosed in masonry and glass block to create some additional interior space without apparent regard for the architectural integrity or appearance of the building. With the deterioration of this building, there was actually consideration given to tearing it down and replacing it with a new, more modern courthouse. Thankfully, that did not happen. But with a major renovation of the building in the early 1990s, the front porch was again freed. The masonry and glass block was removed and the front porch was returned to its original condition and windows were installed that has allowed this natural light to come into this courtroom that you see today. Above the porch is a triangular pediment that has symbolic figures with representations of two major 19th century industries in Stark County. Filling the left angle of the pediment, a farmer rigs up his plow to a pair of horses. Tightly framed by the right angle of the pediment are two merino sheep. As early as 1826, plows were being manufactured in Stark County. It, within two or three decades, had become a major county industry. Merino sheep, noted for the fine quality of wool they produced, were brought to Stark County in the early 1800s. Raising this type of sheep soon became an important industry in the county. The center of the pediment is filled with four allegorical figures representing commerce, justice, agriculture, and industry. The pediment pays homage to both the Greek and Roman sculptural traditions. For the past several decades, the sculptor of the pediment was unknown. There is no identifying mark or signature that has ever been found on the sculpture itself. However, a volunteer researcher at the McKinley Presidential Library and Museum located an article that identifies the sculptor as Mr. J.G.C. Hamilton of Cleveland, Ohio. They described him as the famous uh, sculptor, J.G.C. Hamilton. So I started doing searches for him. And what I, what I found, um, you know, most importantly, I suppose, in Ohio was the famous Moses Cleveland uh, sculpture. It's bronze on granite, and it was very typical of what Mr. Hamilton did at that time. Now, this is the middle 1890s. I found an article that described Mr. Hamilton in 1902 as the most prolific uh, figure sculptor of in the United States. The most notable of the courthouse features is the clock and bell tower crowned by the four trumpeters of justice once visible for some distance along most approaches to the city. The trumpeters of justice more affectionately known to the citizens of Star County as the courthouse angels have kept vigil over our community for more than a century. Each trumpeter stands over 11 feet tall and weighs nearly 450 pounds, made of 24 gauge copper. The extended right arm holds a trumpet five and a half feet long. As we conclude our tour, I wanna to bring into focus the importance of this building and its rich history. Besides the daily administration of justice, there have been many important events and cases that have taken place here. I've spoken about the history of William McKinley. Following his assassination in September of 1901 in Buffalo, New York, his body was brought back to Canton and his casket was brought down Market Avenue 
by horse-drawn carriage, carried into this courthouse by a military honor guard. And he lie in state here in the lobby of this courthouse, and 35,000 people from Canton and the surrounding area came into this courthouse that day to pay their final respects to the fallen president. I've been talking about the rich history of this building, and as many of you know, we recently celebrated the bicentennial of a courthouse being at this location for 200 years. I also think it's very important to talk about the preservation of this building so that future generations can come in and see this beautiful building as the center of our justice system.